Silicon Valley, technology, art, green, and sustainability. Welcome to another episode of Silicon Valley Tech, Art, Green, and Sustainability. Today I'm honored to have an artist with me who's had a fascinating career background to lead you to art, and it's Philip Prescott Parham. Am I pronouncing that right? That's right. Okay. Great job. Prescott middle name? Right. Okay. Not a second name? No, no, previous, no. Previous wife or something? My mother. It's my mother's fault. <laughs> <laughs> So, so tell us a little bit about you and your background before you became an artist. Tell us, tell us a little of your history. About uh, you. In the beginning, is that the way we go? Yeah. I'm from Tennessee originally, and uh, I was uh, uh, went off to uh, art school when I was 18. Went to University of Georgia, and actually, I, uh, my creative my creative talent started at a smaller school in North Carolina called Mars Hill. It's a very, very small school. My father went there, my brother went there, and I didn't like the fact that I was not known by my name, but I was known by, oh, you're Troy's brother. Okay, so I went uh, full tilt boogie to, to try to change that and led the first riot on campus, TV cameras and all that stuff. So I was asked to leave there, and uh, that's where I started my art career, creative s stuff. and. Uh, then went to University of Georgia, and uh, at that point, I was always wanted to go to New York, and uh, I'd always had this this heart desire to paint and make art. And my my aunt Aunt Sai was talk about mentors in your life. You, everybody, you know. Aunt go, Sai, that's an Aunt Sai. Isn't that a weird name? That's an interesting name. Sai is uh, short for Cynthia, I believe. I'm not sure. I never knew it. She, she didn't a, go. A lot. Aunt <laughs> it was, Yeah, Aunt, Aunt Sai. You gotta say it. It's a it's a two syllable word. Okay. C Y is supposed to be pronounced Sai. Okay. You know, it's the, like my first name, Fayo. My friends back there. Anyway, but uh, that's what happened. So she encouraged me to go to art school because she went there, and uh, I didn't get in the first time, and uh, and uh, I knew after a winter quarter I would get in because I mean fall quarter because everybody flunk out. So I got to school there, and there was this, in the middle of all that, that's all I did. We were about a block from the, from the uh, athletic field and, you know, Georgia football, Tennessee football. It's like a religion there. Yeah. I never, I only went to one game because I was making art. So you didn't play ball? I, play, I did not play ball. I made, all I did was make art and play and, and make, and, and uh, and make uh, paintings and drawings and all that stuff. That's all I did. So. And then you were in the stock market before too. Or? Yeah. Well, I went to there to New York City and on the independent studies program for the Whitney Museum. Then I went to Yale University for graduate school. And so. And I, what did you do in graduate school? Graduate school, art, art history. Art again. Okay. And you know, I never connected the dots between art and money. So upon graduation, I instantly became a starving artist. So I said, let's see, what's the closest thing I could do? I could become a stockbroker. So that's what I did. I went in the financial markets for, for 15 years. I really didn't like it and made a lot of money, but it, it, it was but like- But it wasn't a passion. No, it was, it, it was always in the back of my mind. It was a means mind. to an end. Pardon? It was a means to an end. It was a means to an end. To the end, to getting to your art career. That's right, exactly. So that's that's really what I did. That finished up, and I started my own business at a personal development company, and which was a consumer goods company on the internet. That's where that question came from, and I burned out doing that, and I had never finished my dream. So you sold on the internet or on TV? Uh, consumer goods. Yeah. It was on the internet. On the internet. Okay. And so, so I never got to meet you before. <laughs> So how long how long ago was that before you started your your career in art then? So, after all of that time period, seven years ago, I pulled the trigger to start making art again. And and what what was the what made you want to do that at that time? Well, I had I had spent so much time with teaching personal and business development skills, 
And my, my mantra was immediately talk to somebody, well, what do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to be? Be, do, or have, okay? And I had I'd never finished it myself. And I had, when I was going up to San Francisco, when I was a broker, I kept getting these ideas about painting Old Testament paintings. And I thought, this is crazy. But it never left me. It was like, it was like a, a little bird. It was a big bird on my shoulder saying, hey, this is something important. Had you been like to the Vatican or some other places that had religious paintings that you were really inspired by? Never. Never. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. It was just out of the blue. <clears throat> but that's been kind of the course of my pathway. I'll, I'll have this deep desire about something and it'll draw me something. That's just, and that was the way God was leading me to go with these paintings. And I never connected the dots until seven years ago. And then when it all happened, I said, I have to do this. I told my wife, I said, look, I've got to make art. And if it kills me, if I, we run out of money, just kill me and get the insurance money, okay? So uh, that's what I, that's how it's all started. Let's pull up the first slide, which I think are studies. Um, so are these studies, you can look at the, at the screen here. Are these studies of hands and are these pre-sketches? Uh, and what, what are these? Yeah, well, the, the first one on the left is, is a pre-study of the creation of Eve, okay? okay. And uh, I'll talk about that when we go to that particular slide. Okay, and but, the one on the right? And the one on the right is uh, a, also a study of hands in the painting called uh, the, the Wrestling with the Angel with Jacob. Okay. That's, that, that was, those are preparations for that painting. Okay. That one, you, don't, you don't have a slide of that one, but it's on my website, though. Okay. And we can pull up another slide now, too. Okay. And your stuff is just beautiful. I was very taken when I... I love this piece here. You were saying you didn't like this one as much, but I, what is this one here? I love this. Oh, my word. Well, that okay. one, that's called The uh, Wind in the Valley of the Dry Bones. And this is all about us as humans because we say no and we say later, later, later to the passions and the dreams of our lives. Well, this is an Old Testament story out of Ezekiel 37 where God blows wind into this gigantic valley of all dead and dry bones. And those represent the old dead dreams in our lives. So when I saw, when I saw that passage, I th this is an amazing scripture because I'm living, actually living this scripture. It's be the colors in it are just beautiful. And yeah. it, you've got a face, and it kind of looks like a tree, but yeah. it's just yeah. it's gorgeous. Well, it's it's a bummer that that painting didn't come out that way because uh, it, uh, some of the pictures that we have are high res, and then that was not so. But it's beautiful. I mean, it's just. It, I, it is. I, Thank I would you. love to see it in person. I don't know if it, that one's still with you or if someone's commissioned yeah. that one, but it's a, it's a beautiful painting. Let's bring up the next one too. I and mean, your work is just. I saw it. I'm like, oh, you have to come on the show. And what, now, what is this? <laughs> this is amazing. Okay. Now, this is another moment. With, with, with these rep, really interesting. These are uh, events that happen in the Old Testament, and I have personalized them. Okay. And these are not just stories uh, that happen in the antiquities. This is an actual moment that I had when I came to uh, understand a, a more powerful relationship with, with that angel in the burning bush. So this okay? is the burning bush? This is the burning bush. Okay. Moses laying down in front of the burning bush. Okay. So this is the, okay, because looking at it, I wasn't quite sure if that's a person on the ground then. So this is a person. It's just, and the colors again on this are so vivid and beautiful. They're just amazing. And and how big is this? So people can, we can pull that down now. How big is, are these pieces? Those are, they range from some five to seven to, from as feet, from seven to 10 feet in So in comparison width. behind us here, um, it would be, you know, basically a little bit taller than this sign yes, here be, and out a little bit. It'd be a, a long way out. The, the width of us probably right now, it, five it, to seven. Easy, yeah. Very easily. Yeah, so they're, okay. they're huge pieces. Yeah. yeah. And the colors, again, are just amazing, amazing pieces. Let me tell you a really interesting story. When Mar 